So the first thing that I want you to remember is that you are loved. You are God's highest creation and you are divinely created. God has already given you all things. You are divinely designed. Y'all repeat after me. There is nothing wrong with me. And God is not holding anything back from me. Let's say that again. There is nothing wrong with me. And spirit universe is not holding anything back from me. So essentially what I'm sharing today, by the way, share this with some of your friends or coworkers because people need it. What I'm sharing today is not for you to say, oh my God, not another thing I got to do. But, but, but um, I'm sharing it so that you can just, we're just lining up. Have you ever been in a line and somebody said, ma'am or sir, the line starts over here. So, so we're just lining up. And, and so I'm going to break it all the way down. So it would be easy for you to digest and easy for you to really step into. We're just stepping into the powerful creator version that you are. You're deeply loved. And one thing about love is love always responds. The entire universe is standing on tiptoe. All of the light atoms, you know, we're made of light atoms, are waiting for you. Uh, the Bible says, God wants to do exploits in our lives. However you receive that, that's who you are. So know that love always responds. Once you decide what you want, because we've already been given all things, love wants to respond to you. Love, its nature is to respond. So, so I wanted to say that you, you're not trying to coerce, oh my God, I got to use this method. This is not a method. This is a vibration. This is not a method. This is, th this is a being. It's who you are. So in part one, I'm going to teach real carefully like I was when I was a professor. And then in part two, y'all know how I do it. I'm going to give you different vibrations, different, I don't like the word techniques, different ways of thinking, but I'm going to say techniques and methods that you can use. See, different people are different. You know how some people are very, what do you call it? They need to see a picture. Some people can just hear something one time. So, so whatever vibes with you, that's what we're going to do. So in part two, I'm going to give you how to's, but now I'm just sharing what, and I may say the same thing over and over again, but you get where I'm coming from. So the law of assumption and the law of attraction, y'all ready? So the, first of all, the universe God has put fixed laws into the universe. Let me take a cup of, sip of tea. There are fixed laws. And what has happened is that people are not tapping into the, them. They don't understand them. I did not. And so they're just sort of everything they see. Uh, and then when it doesn't happen overnight, 
uh, that get people get upset. But remember, you're learning, uh, you're transforming to step into that new version of who you are. It's like if I went to France and the first time I went to Paris, I didn't know French. So I'm in a new culture, a new environment, a new language. We were at the train station going to the south of France, going to um, Nice, and we didn't understand anything. But but we soon got into the vibration of it, you see. So you're in a new, you're in that fourth and fifth dimension, which has different rules. So here we go. The law of assumption. So, so what is the law of assumption? I'm going to say this so many ways you're going to get it. The law of assumption simply states that whatever you assume as true or whatever you believe to be true becomes your reality. The law of assumption states that whatever you assume to be true Whatever you say, this is who I am. This is what I have. This belongs to me. And, you know, the word assume means to accept, to take, to take as real, to expect, and presume. So it means to see or to conclude that this is who I am and this is what I have. So you must assume or you must accept that after you decide what you want, y'all know that part, that you, that you are already what you want to be and you're really living in that fourth and fifth dimension world. What is the 4D world? That is your imagination and your Christ consciousness. What is your 5D world? Uh, that is where you're meditating and going to, to another level. That is the invisible realm, realm. So you assume that you already have what you desire, you assume, you assume, got that out, that you are already what you want to be. So you don't really need the evidence of the, of your five senses, that 3D world. Remember last week I said 3D is old news. It's like me going back and looking at some news uh, five weeks ago. That's old news. What's going on today? So essentially, I'm going to break it down. There would be a knowing on the inside. You got to remember that God is the one who gave you your desires. God is the one who said, wow, start your own business. Wow, I want to be a mom and be married. Wow. I want a new car. I just got my new car, y'all. So grateful. Wow. I, I, I want a home. God is the one who gave you the desires. You know, in John, it says God wants your joy to be full. So you will be resolute about I already have it. So you assume you already have what you desire. How can we assume that? Because creation is already finished. All possibilities already exist. If you're a Christian, the finished works of Cal, uh, the finished works of Christ, all things are done. And we are simply choosing. It doesn't mean that you're not going to have to take any action steps. But the first thing you need to do is to decide what you want. I'm not going to stay on that part. But, but then to assume that you already have it. So, so what's the difference between the law of attraction 
and the law of assumption. So we know the law of attraction says what? Like attracts like. Like feelings, like thinking, like thoughts, like pictures. So so it's like attracts like. And so, but with the law of assumption, it's two different laws. The law of assumption says that you can manifest whatever you want by feeling that what you are believing for, you already have it. Let's go to the Bible, Mark 11, 23, 24. When you pray, when you decide what you need, when you ask for what you want, next thing, believe. So to me, uh, the law of assumption is simply believing. Believing what you desire is already yours. How can you say that, Constance? Because all things are already exist in the invisible world. Quantum physics, all possibilities exist. It's when you focus in on and put your attention on and live in the state of, I am going to Paris. You stay there, you live there. And I'm gonna give you some ways that you can that you can use it. You see yourself in Paris, you see yourself eating croissants and cheese and drinking wine at the French cafes. You listen to the it's already yours. Why? Because we can choose, be, do, and have anything. So but so we know that's the law of attraction. So 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 when you assume something, when you accept something as real, you 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 are acknowledging this is what I have. So when you say wow, when you change your focus in the quantum field to I'm going to Paris or whatever it is, like circumstances and events with the same similar energetic magnetic frequency for the things that you are focusing in on begin to send out a signal to the universe this is who I am I'm going to Paris this is who I am I am going there you know it's so interesting I was uh, meditating this morning and I was thinking about why I want to do a cleanse so I had interviewed this doctor, and I'm going to have him back. I think it's Dr. Tatatos. And he has this powerful detox 17, 21, 14, 14, 21. And he just dropped in my spirit. Why, why did that happen? Because I had been in the law of assumption. I am receiving the wisdom that I need for my for the perfect detox for my body for this season in my life i saw my friends saying to me this is going to be just one way you can use the law of assumption and and, and it's called whispering and and hearing conversations i saw my friends saying to over there talking wow constance really looks great look at her skin i wonder what detox she's on because they're always saying for the last 20 or 30 years, y'all been on some kind of detox or some kind of something, just really fueling my body. So, you, you know, it's where you overhear a conversation. So I just begin to get in that assumption that the right detox would come to me. And because God knows my body, he knows where my body is. He understands. Um how I'm feeling you know just recently I told somebody when our angel first made her transition I ate every kind of sweet under the sun I'm not even a sweet eater and I know I was emotionally eating but I want to detox all of that that's just a, 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 an example of that 
So the law of assumption wants you to feel your emotions of already having and achieving something as though you already have it. So that means you're not looking at your 3D world. We're not acting as if. No, we're not acting as if, honey. We are knowing that all things have been given to us. God loves us. The whole universe surrounds us. We don't have to know how. We're not focusing in on that 3D world. We are really just looking at, I already have this. So you must assume the feeling of the wish fulfilled until your assumption has all of the sensory vividness of reality. Just like that example that I shared. I felt my friend saying that about me. What is she doing? What's going on? You look great. So you must imagine that you are already experiencing what you desire. We're not waiting for it. We're not praying for it. We're not begging for it. We're not longing for it. We already have it because you do in that fourth and fifth dimension. But it can only download or manifest or be answered in prayer before when you pray, when do you believe you receive? As within, so with so without. So you must assume the feeling of the fulfillment of your desire until you are possessed by it. You are obsessed with something and, and, and you are feeling it on the inside. Remember the importance of marrying your thinking and your emotions. That's major. So if you want to go on vacation, where do you want to go? Let's say you want to go to Cancun, Mexico. All right. You may not have the money. We're not looking at 3D. You begin to say, okay, now God says I can have all things. And quantum physics says all possibilities exist. So you begin to think about it. You see it on YouTube. You decide what kind of swimsuit you're going to wear. You listen to some stories on people on YouTube who've been there. You research the hotels. You pull out your suitcase. What are you doing? You're getting in the state and in the vibration of, I already have this. All right, so really you are a conscious creator because whatever you believe or assume to be true about yourself and your outside world, you're going to manifest and it's going to appear on the outside, y'all. It's a lunar universal law. You're not that special that it ain't going to show up. You are the creator of your outside world by what you are believing, imagining, assuming, and feeling. Got to move on. All right? So it gives you 100% control because you're the creator. I can be mad or I can be glad. I can be happy or I can be upset. Okay, so remember the outside world is the world of effect. The cause is on the inside of you. It's a reflection of your beliefs. If you hadn't heard my last show on how to change your limiting beliefs or how to create your world with your beliefs with Danielle, I'm getting so many emails on that. So your outside world is the effect. It's a reflection of your beliefs. So is it going to be victimhood or I'm just a bad creator? I can manifest anything. It has a lot to do with the concept of yourself. That's why I said you are a ma magnificent spiritual being that's loved by God. You are worthy. There is nothing wrong with you. And it's going to be reflected back to you. So what do you assume about your body? What do you assume about your money? What do you assume about your health? What are you assuming and living in about your business? So you believe and assume that you are chosen. You believe that you are a powerful creator. And remember, 
there is no time in the spirit. God is outside of time. So everything is when now. Everything is when everybody say now. So as I said earlier, you're not wishing, you're not praying, you're not begging. You know, there were years when I just prayed for stuff and did not understand these laws. Or one day, one day I'm going to take my children on vacation. What are you looking at? You're looking at your 3D world. Your 3D world is all new. So, so, so it's going to take persistence and practice. I'm going to get in that when I teach you how to do it. You're not checking. Somebody say, I keep looking at my bank account. Why are you looking at your bank account? That's 3D. And I'm not saying that you just sit around and meditate and just, uh, excuse me, and just imagine. But one thing I'm going to say up front, I'm getting ahead of myself is if you want more money, you're not looking at your, at, at, at your checking account. You, you, you're imagining yourself having the money to come, come in. Somebody just sent me some money today. I was totally surprised at it. But in my mind, I see money coming to me from the north, west, east, and south. And that may look like God may drop an idea uh, in you. God may touch somebody's heart. But your job is to assume that you have what you, what you want. All right? So what else do I want to say before I go uh, uh, on commercial break? So, so really, when you are assuming that you already have the thing like Neville Goddard said, you're stepping into the new version of yourself. You're stepping into the I amness. Remember, Everything is manifested through your I amness. I am healthy and vibrant and young and toned and fit. I am abundant and prosperous, and God downloads to me witty ideas. So you just begin to live your life under the assumption that your desire is already accomplished y'all because it is we have already been given all things that pertain to life and godliness let me take a sip of tea and that's why i believe gratitude is so big this morning when i woke up boy i had so much as a boy i got a busy day but I begin to say, thank you for my pillar. Y'all know that's the first thing. Thank you for my home. Thank you that I'm healed. Thank you that I'm whole. Thank, I mean, just radical gratitude. And if, and if you could just say, God, thank you that I already have all things. Thank you for the unlimited possibilities that exist. If you began with that, that would begin to move you into that new version of yourself. Okay, so we know the law of assumption requires you, I don't like the word require, but the law of assumption uh, really pushes you to feel the emotions now that you would have if you assumed I already have my new car. So see, my new car is in my garage, but I saw it in my mind. My friend asked me this month, so how you feel? I said, I've been seeing that car for six months. So when I would go out in my garage, I said, I'm radically grateful and radically thankful for it. So when I would go out in my garage, I wouldn't see my old car. I would see the new car. I knew I wanted black. I said, I'm going back to my first black Mercedes way back in the day. I knew I wanted black. Uh, black. So when I we go in my garage. We keep our trash in our garage, our, tra our big trash can. And when I would go and put something in the trash can, I would be walking by my black Mercedes, not my champagne one. So I assumed that that desire was already mine. I, I, I Because your consciousness creates. I said, this is mine now. Thank you, Father. So what you're doing is you're seeing and feeling in your heart that is real. When? Now. Now, we're not acting as if we know 
all we need to do is decide what we want because everything is already ours. You got to assume that that future, when I just said my future black Mercedes six months ago is a now fact. So you assume the feeling that your wish is fulfilled or done. Everybody understand. And you persist and allow your beliefs and your feelings to be the dominant feeling of it's already done. I'm going to share a story. And I think I'm going to go to commercial break. Uh, I got so much more to share. Uh, this couple that were in their 60s, uh, somebody had really swindled them out of all of their money. I think I shared this before, but they decided, uh, the wife decided, I want this certain house on all of these acres um, with certain kind of trees. I think it was like a big old farmhouse because she wanted to look at the mountains. So, uh, you know, instead of them being mad at the person, they didn't have the money. You know, they said, we in our sixties, high in the world, we're going to be able to build a house on acres we don't have anything but they persisted and assumed that their future dream was a now fact in their mind every day they saw themselves sitting on the front por porch in their mind every day they assumed that they already had it have it in their mind every day the man saw his wife saying oh look at those beautiful trees whatever kind of trees th that they were um, they were feeling it because in consciousness, they knew that they didn't have to figure it out. They didn't know how they knew that God wanted their joy to be full. God is the one who put that desire uh, in their heart, in their heart. And then they begin to be grateful for it. How in the world are they going to get some land? They didn't tell anybody. How is that going to happen? But every day. They planted that seed in their mind that it is already done. They saw themselves already doing and having and trusting, trusting that they didn't have to figure it out. So they, in their imagination, they would meditate on it and be grateful. If God told them to, um, uh, to, to do anything, they would do it. So they packed up their stuff, you know, little bit by little bit because they're like, wow, how is this ever going to happen? And this is the God's truth. That's why when I say to you, when you hold something to be true in your mind and you are resolute about it, if God has to pass over a go through how many ever billion people is, I think Dr. Kimbrough said it was eight, I'm just going to say eight billion people to get to you what you want, it will happen. But you must be persistent. You must stay there. Can you imagine them believing for acres? So out of the blue, well, well, no, I said that purposely. Nothing happens out of the blue. Someone called them that they hadn't talked to in years. Remember, they didn't tell nobody. And the man said to him, do you want 23 acres and got a big farmhouse on it? I just felt led to give that to you. Why would that happen? Nothing just happens. It was a farmhouse facing the same mountain. They had not told a soul, but one thing they had done was they had forgiven that person that had stolen all their money. You got unforgiveness is debt. You got to forgive and release. And they are now living on 23 or 25 acres. She's sitting on the front porch looking at her beautiful tree, looking at the mountains simply because they assumed what they desired was already theirs. A great segue for this commercial is so powerful. 
So, you know, God is no respect of person. You're not a special case that it doesn't happen for you. But these people held in their mind did not pay any attention to their 3D world and manifested their dream life. I'll be right back. 